I got a new masking technique that's gonna change the way you color grade. But you're gonna need DaVinci Resolve to pull this off. So let's get right into it. Today, I'm gonna show you how I took this shot and turned it into this. Have you ever lit something so perfectly, but when you pull it in post, there's just this little small adjustments that you could have made on a day to make your job a hell of a lot easier, but you just didn't make that change. That happened to me on this shoot, and I wanna take you guys through how I solved this problem. Here's a clip that we're working with today. Notice how the floor in this shot is immediately drawing your eye. And how I would usually fix this problem is I would go to get a power window, and I would take this power window and put it over my floor, make it soft, track it if, if it's moving, right? And then I will go and, and darken that. But notice, as I darken this, it's darkening my talent as well. I like the exposure on my talent. So how do I make adjustments to the scene around my subjects without touching my subjects? And on this shot, everyone's dancing. So how can I pull this off? I'm gonna show you. I have the nose structure built up here, but I'm gonna show you how I built this from scratch. You're gonna wanna start off by adding a node, a corrector node, and then going over to grab your source input and connect it to the input of your corrector node. I disconnect my look and start a brand new color grade up top of my look here. Okay, so now we're working with a log image. The first thing you wanna do is convert this log image into Rec. 709. And to do that, I'm gonna use a color space transform. Okay, so we shot this on Sony S-Log3, so that's gonna go in your input. 3 Cine, S-Log3. And I'm going out to my display space, Rec. 709, Gamma 2.4. Okay, so now that we converted our image over to Rec. 709, we wanna give our key as much data as it can get so it can make its job easier with masking and tracking. To do that, I'm going to increase the saturation here. And I know it's gonna look ugly, but like I said, you wanna give it as much data and contrast so it can track all of your subjects really easy. Then I wanna give it some contrast. Notice how my subjects are popping out of the screen now. Okay, now here's where the magic happens. I like to add a serial node and then I add a couple of parallel nodes, one for each of your subjects. Next, you wanna go over to Magic Mask. That's here. Make sure better is selected and you want to mask each and every one of your subjects. I'll start off by going from left to right. So here, I just kind of draw all over my subject here. I press Shift H, that lets me see who I selected. If you hold down Alt or Option, you can actually get rid of anything that you don't want to mask, right? I press Shift H and I track that. Be sure to watch it back so you can make sure your mask stays intact the whole time. Press Shift H, watch it back. Okay. Yeah, so that's pretty good. You're gonna wanna do that for each and every dancer. So let me go ahead and get that done. Okay, so now once you have each and every one of your subjects tracked and masked, you want to go to your parallel node, add a serial node. Now you want to delete this parallel node, click in the gray area, right click and go to key mixer. Okay, so now that you have your key mixer, notice how I have five subjects, but I only have two inputs. So right click on your key mixer and add enough inputs for your subjects. So that's five, one, two, three, four, five. And the reason why you wanna use a key mixer is because what that does is it basically combines all of your keys, basically all of your masks together in one node so that any changes that you make happens to all of your keys instead of you having to do them individually, if that makes sense. Now you want to connect all of your keys into the key mixer. And with your top node, make sure you connect down to your source. And with your key mixer, make sure you connect your output into the input of your source. 
Now you want to go over and make sure you did it correctly. And how to do that is you go over to your key mixer node that can be found here. And notice that all of my keys down here should be in white. And if I play through them, everything is getting tracked correctly. Okay, so now here is where it all gets pulled together. Check this out. Now you would disconnect your key grades reconnect your color grade to your to the output okay so now you're able to take the key that you created to mask your subjects away from the adjustments of your power window but notice right when i connected you see that it didn't bring the floor down but it brought my dancers down so what you can do to combat that is go back up to your keys go to your key mixer and what you want to do is invert your mask selection by left clicking this map button right here. Notice how the floor is immediately impacted and my mask is inverted. Everything is intact. Nice. And to blend it in a little bit better, go to your key output and just bring it down a little bit okay so the advantages of creating the mass on top of your grade is because now I can use each and every one of my subjects mask and make individual adjustments to them let's say if the woman on my left she is too bright I could then take her mask pipe hers in and now I have just hers. And since it's already tracked, it's not going to break if you want to make changes underneath your grade. Notice how everyone's mask is still tracked. All right, guys. So look, that's it for today. I hope you took a lot from this technique. I learned this technique from taking a course from TAC Resolve that I paid $300 for. And I just wanted to save you guys the money. And I do realize that it's a little bit on the advanced side, but I actually created a playlist of videos on my channel that will catch you right up to speed, starting with this banging video on how to fix dark footage. I'll be uploading frequently, so subscribe now so you won't miss that. Mount up.